This is a viewer requested costume. Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name's Ryan, or RJR Productions, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I made my Mandalorian costume from the new Disney Plus TV show, The Mandalorian. Let's get right into it. To make the chest plate on this project, I started out by making my own template, so what I did is I just gauged the correct size. I just did an estimate, and it ended up being the right size. So what I did is I drew out that middle segment in the chest plate first, then after I had that done, I drew out the outside edge and then the middle strip down it goes down the middle. And I only drew out one side because you only need one side of the template because both sides are exactly the same. So they're just mirrored, so it doesn't matter. It ended up being too wide, so I just cut it down and made it the correct size. Now I have both of my template pieces done. This is the strip that runs down the middle. And then this is the main side piece. So these are the upper body chest section and then there's the lower chest piece that kind of comes and runs all the way up against here but what i'm going to do is trace this piece out on cardboard and then what i'll do right now is cut this little center detail out and then trace this piece out with a little border around this edge just so it can glue underneath that edge then I, once I was happy with those template pieces, I transferred them onto cardboard. I ended up putting a couple darts in these, which is just a triangle missing from the cardboard that helps it angle together and have a nicer shape. So I just put one of those on each side of the template, and then I glued those darts together, and then I glued the two side pieces onto the main piece. Then once I had that done, all I had to do was the middle piece on the back of the chest plate. So now that I have this all assembled, all I need to do is do the angular bits on the inside of here, and then I'll do that one piece of cardboard that goes underneath here. Then after I have that done, I'll probably work on the shoulders, and then the gauntlets. The strip of cardboard that went under it was a fairly straightforward shape, so I just traced that out, then glued it on with a very thin piece of cardboard at the bottom, and then just to make sure it stayed in place, I used a wire and just put that at the very bottom of the piece, and I made sure to use a lot of glue so it would stay on there. Then I was done with the chest plate after I did that middle detail. Now that I have the chest detail done, I'm going to do the dents here, 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 and here. The dents were fairly straightforward to do. I just drew out where they were, and then I took my X-Acto knife and I held it at a very shallow angle, and I just cut all the way around that piece. So I removed about half of the cardboard. So basically what I would do is I would cut out the shape, and then once I would fill it in with spackle and sand it, it would be an indention so you could see where the bullet or laser would have gone. Then after I had those dents done, I just put in the piece of cardboard in the middle and put the little detail line on top of it. Now that the chest armor is all done, I'm going to go outside and spackle over these seams right here, this one seam in the middle, and then spackle over these dents so it's a little indent, but it's not as obvious as that. Then after I have that done, I'll sand it down and then paint it the silver color first. So I'll paint these silver and I'll also paint this silver. Then I'll mask that off and then paint the rest of it a mixture of red and brown. The spackling stage is very straightforward. I just took some spackle and I applied it to the dents and the seams. And then I took some water and smoothened it out. And I'm not going to show this for any of the rest of the video just because I don't need to show it more than once. Then once I had that all done, I sanded it down, and then once I was happy with the smoothness of that, I just took my time and made sure that it looked good, and then I took out a brown spray paint, and I sprayed the whole thing brown. And basically, I used two coats of brown paint, and I used two coats because if I only used one, some of the spackle and some of the cardboard texture could be seen through the first coat. Now I have this chest plate all nice and masked off, so this is going to remain silver and these are also going to remain silver. Now I know in my last video when I was booting the helmet, I said that 
Black is a really good base layer for metallic paints, but since this brown is also a darker shade, I figured that it'll work just as well. When I painted this piece, I used the same silver as the previous helmet. And then I looked at a reference image and I used some silver paint and I painted on where all the remaining silver details are, like some of the scrapes and scuffs on the armor. So I just looked at a reference image and I used a dry brushing technique to where I got my paintbrush, I got some paint on it, and then I wiped almost all of it off to where there's very little remnants, and then I just put it on there. The next step in this costume were the shoulders. So it started out as like a three inch wide piece, then it was about six inches long. And what I did is about every three quarters of an inch, I would just cut a mark about an inch into the piece. And then I would cut a tiny, tiny little dart out of it, similar to how I did on the chest plate. And then I would glue all of those darts together and it gave it a nice conformed curve that went down the whole piece. Now I made sure to take my time when gluing this. So I did two different types of gluing on this. I glued the darts together with a glue in the middle. And then after that was done, I reinforced it with a little bit more glue on the bottom. Now I need to form the side piece for these. So I just estimated, I did about a quarter circle piece, but it was more like an oval. And I took that piece and I just conformed it to the shape and ended up adding a dart into this piece as well. Similar to my Iron Man Mark 85 shoulder piece. I just tried to make this one look a little bit more round and a lot more smooth. Both sides of the shoulder are exactly symmetrical. And something I ended up doing is the shoulder was looking very wide to me. So something that I did is I just cut it straight down the middle and that ended up helping with the width because originally it was about six or seven inches wide and ended up being able to cut that down to about three or four. Then once I had one of them done, I just repeated all of the steps for the other one. So I started with the main strip, I cut all those darts in it, and then I traced out the two main side template pieces and I glued them on and I made sure to fill in all the gaps with hot glue just so it'd be a little bit easier on the spackling stage. I put two darts on the side pieces on both of them. So there's a dart about a third of the way into it from the back side and about a third of the way into it from the front side. So in total, there are three flaps on the sides of the shoulders. And for the gun, I found this one piece of PVC pipe and I'm going to make the main bit like two feet long. So I have a mark at two feet and I'm just going to cut that. And so I just came back from thrift shopping and I'll show you what I have. So I have this little tan jacket and this is for that one tan part that goes around the body and that's what the chest plate attaches to and then in here I have two gray shirts because you can see in the pictures that he has two gray shirts and then I have gray pants and then that's pretty much it for that and I also have a light tan shirt and this one's for the undershirt it's a little bit darker than that one but overall it's pretty light tan. Then I have two belts for the shoulder belt and the hip belt. So I'm going to take that tan jacket and I'm just going to cut it up and make the jacket. This tan jacket was a big pain to cut up because the sleeves had two layers to them. So there was the outside sleeve and then there was the decorative inner layer. So I had to cut it twice and it just ended up making a big mess but I ended up cutting off both sleeves and a little bit around the top of the neck just because there's a collar at the top, so I cut that off. Then I also cut it about halfway up along the side to make it a little bit shorter, and it stopped right at the bottom of the rib cage. Now back to the shoulders. I painted one of them the same brown color as the chest plates, and then I painted the other one a dark tan, a more like a desaturated tan color. And then after I had those all painted, I started working on the gauntlets. So they were basically just a square rectangle shape that I just flared up at the edges just a little bit, just so when you rolled it up, it would be a very slight cub. And then when I had both of the main outlines done, I started working on this little raised section on the end. So the raised section is basically two really long, like six inch and then half inch tall triangles. And there's two of them, so four in total, two on each gauntlet. And I just made a prism with that. So I put a big flat piece of cardboard on top of that. Then I added a bunch of details on that. I was just looking at the reference images. Now 
I'm done with both of these gauntlets. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the thigh pieces. And then after that, I'll work on the shins. And then that's all the armor I'll have to do. The left thigh piece on this costume is very straightforward. It's just a about four by six rectangle that has the top corners and bottom corners rounded off. And then I just made sure to curl that. And then the other one is a little bit more of a complex shape. So the top, it's about an inch wide and at the bottom, it's about two inches wide. And I just made sure to look at a reference image. I can't really give you the exact measurements because there really aren't any, I just winged it. And then it has a strip going down the middle and then it angles on all the sides. So it has a little bevel on all the sides and a little border that's just one piece of cardboard tall. So I just made sure to wrap around all the edges and I made sure to take my time so there weren't any obvious gaps on this. And the more time you take, the better it'll end up looking. I just took my time and made sure to make it look good. Then after I had both of those thigh pieces done, I started working on the gun. So with the gun, I started with that front piece and it's a weird like U shape. So I just estimated that and it's two pieces of cardboard stuck together with a little bit of gap towards the back, but the fronts are glued together. So I just estimated that. And then once that piece was done, I stuck a pencil out of the end of it so it could be glued inside of the main PVC pipe. Then I just looked at the reference image for the handle portion or the metal portion of this gun and that was where the housing is. So I just used pieces of cardboard and put it all together. Now that I have this main box done, what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of supports in there for the pipe and then I'm going to add a couple more details around it and then I'll make the stock. So that'll be basically two pieces of cardboard with a little bit of spacer in between, kind of like this. So. I'll go add those details and then make the stock. The same thing follows with this piece. I can't really give you any exact measurements. I just sized it to the back of the housing and I just estimated the size. I put a couple of one inch high supports in between the pieces. Now I'm done with the stock. So I'm gonna go paint this the same brown color as most of the armor. And then I'll just have this piece to put the details on. And then I'll just have to take another piece that goes on the barrel. It's a segment of this, and this will be painted black as well. And then I just had to make sure that I was painting everything the right color. So the left thigh piece was painted the same color as the shoulder, and then the shoulder was painted with a little bit of gray at the top. And then the gauntlets in the right thigh piece were painted the same brown color. And then once I had those painted, I painted the barrel, and the barrel is a black color, same with that front piece, and so is the scope. And then once the front piece was dried for a little bit, I just sprayed the front of it with a little bit of gold. And that gave it kind of an ombre effect that made it travel down the whole piece. So the gloves for this project are the exact same gloves as my clone trooper costume. I just took a piece of blue tape and put that little detail on there. So if I wanted to, I could take it off and wear it for the clone trooper costume. So those are the gloves and now they're complete. Now the final thing for me to make for this project were the shin pieces. So they started out as just big rectangles of cardboard that went from my mid shin to my knee. And I just added a bunch of details to them. The left shin piece I made first, so it's basically just that rectangle. And then it has another strip at the top, another strip about an inch above the bottom. And then I just added this one piece at the top and then a little box at the top as well. Now that I have all these pieces painted, the only thing left for me to do is finish that one other shin piece. So now I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna assemble everything here, like the gun. The basic frame of this piece was almost exactly the same as the other one. So it's just a tube of cardboard that I glued together and then I added a little strip going up the front of it and then another strip wrapping around the top and then this little angular knee piece kind of going around the top. And that kind of just angled up, then it was flat, and then it angled back down. And it had another bezel piece on top of it. Then I just wrapped a piece of cardboard around the back. Now assembling the gun was pretty straightforward. I just stacked up a bunch of cardboard and put it inside of that housing piece. And then I glued the barrel in, and then I glued the stock on the back. And then I cut out a portion for where the trigger should go. So the trigger was basically just a piece of silver cardboard that I wrapped around for the trigger guard. And then the trigger was just another plain piece of silver cardboard glued in. The scope was glued on with gold pieces as well. The cape that I used for this project is just a big black tablecloth. Now that I have the two shin pieces in from painting, I'm going to glue all the details onto one of them 
And the other one just has this knee pad that glues on top of it. So I'll go do that right now. And now I have finished putting all those tubes on that one leg piece. And then I also went ahead and painted this piece a different color. So now that I have these two pieces done, that is it. That is the finished costume. This project was really fun to make and I highly recommend that you make it too. Now this is my last video of the year and I hope you've enjoyed my channel so far. I've had a lot of growth and I'm really happy with where I'm standing with my channel at the moment. If you have made it this far, thank you for watching my video. If you have any suggestions on what I should make next, please leave them in the comments down below. This has been RJR Productions. And I'll see you in the next one.